Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another podcast. I haven't done one of these for a very long time. I'm joined by a very special guest today, who is known as Bagsy. Now, Bagsy is very famous in the car world. So uh, give yourselves a little introduction, Bagsy. Let us all know what you do. Very, and, uh, very, very, very famous in a very small world. <laughs> <laughs> um, introduction for me. So send it. What do I do? Well, that's nothing at the moment, but. Uh, Technically, currently unemployed, but uh, when hopefully this is all over, I'll be back out um, across Europe and into America, predominantly drifting, uh, participating in Drift Masters European Championship, and uh, using some of the cars we've got for shows like Goodwood Festival Speed. Um, a lot of people in the UK might have seen us at like players show doing some drift demos there. Um, Did I see that you're out doing NASCAR demos as well recently. Yeah, so one of the things we got asked to do last year was, um, oh, actually, no, the year before, 2017 or 2018, uh, we got asked to do um, shows, like demonstrations, uh, you know, smoke shows, essentially, at uh, NASCAR events, which is pretty cool. Monster Energy has a huge involvement now with NASCAR. So um, they were the main drive between, uh, you know, main drive with bringing us out. So we were out there, uh, we got asked to go out there and do some uh, do some shows, which was really cool. So we've got a car currently got one car currently in america uh one's in ireland and uh the rest are all in south end essex love that proper essex yeah. boy love it man essex. so before i jump into all the other stuff i i think I, the story of how i met you is kind of funny so oh, really? yeah it was over in ireland properly that was the first time i met you when you were setting yeah. up your massive lorry in that pissing rain and you oh, obviously man. had no idea who i was and i was just there like just wandering around needing something to do and i was like do you guys need a help setting up your tent and you're like nah it's all right <laughs> you're like nah it's cool man you can just go and chill it's fine and i was like no i literally am just willing to help but like, i just need something to and do. i and i probably really appreciated it yeah. but I, you know, I generally don't like to uh put pe other people through that pain that and the rain was so bad but i was the like you know yeah, what? That was with uh it was with johnny right from status era uh he come along later on i was there with kian from the at the time it was idc wasn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just like hanging out with him and he was like yeah just go and mope around and do whatever and I was like okay well I'll go find something to do and that's all you you guys struggling about that man it's the, just anybody that hasn't seen Bagsy's lorry it's the biggest lorry in the world with the biggest tent on the side of it and I was like you know what I'm willing to battle through the pain and then you bought me pizza and then we've been friends ever since <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, the uh the tent's really cool once it's up uh it, it looks yeah. it looks it looks awesome and uh it's a really great place for us over the weekend when we're racing because we've got like our own central little camp. Other teams will come and hang out of us. We kind of have everybody in the paddock come hang out in the evenings. Um, but it's some job getting out. Like it mm. is some job. It takes probably four to six people, anything between five to six hours maybe to get that thing up. And like on it's that a long day, there was, challenge. there was three of you doing it. I can't remember. The yeah. So I sometimes, remember one of the chats, yeah. but the other guy I can't remember, but there was one really nice guy who was helping you out. And he was like, please, can you help? <laughs> he was like, he's just being polite. Can you please help? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I was like, yeah, Sam, I'm just get stuck in. And it was like, really I fun. reckon that was probably Gav, our lorry driver. He'll rope anybody in to help. Yeah, yeah, so I think he, it was just Gav. So yeah. he has less, just so he has less work. <laughs> it was good, man. I really, I did actually enjoy it, but I like doing like stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was really, really, really good crack. I've got to ask, the first question I've got to ask is being a pro drifter. How did you get into drifting? Because you kind of got into it early doors, didn't you, in the UK? Yeah, 20, 20, uh, 20, when was it? 2007, 2007, I think. Can you hear my dog squeaking in the toilet yeah. background? <laughs> can, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to take that off for one sec. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's down. The bags has got a dog at Christmas, people. So just so you all know, and, uh, she wouldn't come on camera and say hello. But, I'll uh, try and get it to come say hello in a minute. Yeah. yeah. I've got a Springer slash poodle. Are you coming to say hello, Rosie? Come here, come here. <laughs> Here's Rosie. Oh. <laughs> oh this Rosie, great. she's uh well since Christmas. She was tiny, she was only a little puppy when we got her. And uh now she's got massive, like eight kilos. Full grown puppy. Um I thought getting a poodle it would somehow stay a little bit smaller than she is. <laughs> Springer part of her has uh, fully come out, but uh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so 2007, really. Yeah, I just saw drifting online, and uh, I saw it live at like a car meet, like in a car park in somewhere, probably Lakeside or somewhere. And uh, <laughs> I just saw some guys doing donuts, and I was like, man, that is way cooler than 
spinning around in my Fiesta on the handbrake all the time. And uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, that looked like a lot of fun. I wanted to get it. I wanted to have a go. I've done a little bit of, I've done a little bit of racing when I was younger with dad, uh, just like go-karting and motocross and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, from there I learned basic stuff, donuts, figure of eights, all that cool, you know, cool stuff when you're a kid. And then yeah. <laughs> uh, friends, um, friends had gone to, you know, go and do some events at like Santa Pod and stuff. There was like drift days on you could go and like have a practice at. So I just kind of went along to that. And then from there, um, this championship was just starting and it was called like the BDC, the British Drifting Championship. But there'd been other things before that that had been kind of really, really grassroots. And uh, the BDC was like, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit more professional. So I decided to kind of at least have a go at doing a few rounds. And uh, yeah, it went, it worked out pretty good. And then ever since then, um, yeah, I've just been, I've just been doing as much drifting as I could. Do you have any uh, fond memories of any street o incidences that you probably couldn't talk about until now? <laughs> until now ah do you know what you know there's something there's, there's it's it's weird street drifting it's like it's something now that i you know i i can't deny i've never you know i've never participated or been and watched or whatever because i you know it's just i can't Everywhere. lie about, i can't lie that much about my past but you know at the end of the day you know it's it, it's it's something that's not that clever you know you can you can get in a lot of you can get in a lot of trouble for it but there's something so kind of like just exciting and fun about doing it. That's the, that's the thing. Cause it's so wrong. It makes it feel so <laughs> yeah. right. And, uh, <laughs> memories. I don't know, man. It's just, I suppose when you've been out and like all the boys come out and you're, you know, having a good laugh and you get left alone by the police for the whole night. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, you know, then, you know, other, other cars will arrive and it just becomes like, like a bit of a cult <laughs> gathering, you know, like a car cruise yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of full, of, full of everybody, you know, everybody in the scenes there and the police don't arrive and it's just a fun chilled night out. It's kind of like that, but with just street drifting, you know what I mean? And no yeah, one yeah. crashes, and no one breaks down. It's just a lot of fun. So that's kind of, I suppose over the years, you know, that was, that was kind of the, at the start, a, you know, huge part of my, you know, learning to drive and learning to drift sort of, um, you know, and that's kind of what built it for me. And then I realized that, you know, I could do it not on the street and actually go and do it somewhere safe and legal. Yeah. I think once you get into the safe and legal stuff as well, and you realize how much faster you can go and how much more you can push it before you wreck your car. And like, it, that's when the real adrenaline starts to kick in. I feel like, like, I can't lie. I, I had a massive wreck when on my first ever night out in my E36, when I first got it, like, like I proper binned it. And it was like, it was bad. <laughs> it was like one of those ones where you're like, Oh dear like yeah. but you live and learn from it and like i you know you have a laugh um and i'm just lucky i didn't hurt myself basically but uh yeah. you know like, I, ri- I, ri- I ripped the sump off of a volvo 340 one night <laughs> fully ripped the sump off like there was like <laughs> like literally sump pan fully off the car really like, yeah like left somewhere down the road that's brilliant. and just oil just everywhere and uh yeah, really bad. Just That's luckily, uh, I hit a curb and I kind of went onto some grass. And I think there was a bit of a tree stump that was cut down. And I kind of went over that and that kind of took the sump clean off. And uh, yeah, just left oil everywhere, which is obviously not great. But, you know, it wasn't in the road, so that wasn't too bad. But yeah, no, I've had plenty of incidences. Plenty, plenty of accidents <laughs> trying to push the boundary too far. Yeah, that's pretty. But, you know, that's part of it, and that's the scene, and you know, that's you know, that's kind of how drifting was kind of invented, really, in the hills of Japan back in the day. So, yeah, it's definitely it's one of those kind of if if anybody hasn't done any drifting before and they're looking to get into it, it's one of those risks that you really have to anticipate that you could end up having an accident. It's yeah, like there's it's, so many there's so many places now you can go. I mean, back in the day, there was no you know, there was no like drift land. There was no you know there wasn't drifting practice days anywhere really other than kind of like one a month at Santa Pod or something and um now there's you know loads of places are doing like drift practice days um I mean now I mean there is you know admittedly there is fewer now than there probably was a couple of years ago mm. you know because we lost Rockingham and all those sorts yeah. of facilities although I think Rockingham is now back up and maybe doing some drift days I think they're out of again. like they they were yeah. like learn to drift got the rights to it and i actually went to yeah. one i blew my gearbox okay. up and crashed my s15 on the same day no. so it was brilliant no. <laughs> it was great <laughs> um, but uh 
that, that it was really fun. It was a great little day. But they that Vauxhall have bought the skid pan now. I think. Oh really? It's going to use it to store cars on because they can't sell them because all their cars are shit. So like that's why basically I think <laughs> right. the reason is yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. Well, you know there was so you know that even now there is still way more opportunity to learn to drift legally and safely than there is the need for doing it on the road probably you well, know? especially yeah. when you started man like 2007 there must have been nowhere the funniest thing is about when we used to go out street drifting back in 2007 as well is that the cops didn't even know what drifting was right okay the police literally were like can you tell like if you drove off and they came and spoke to like people standing on the side of the road just having a watch they literally just say can you tell your mate to stop dicking about putting the handbrake up going around the corner every five seconds? Right, okay. <laughs> and, either, and, and it was either literally we, we were that bad at the time that we couldn't drift and we were trying to just figure it out. It looked like we were just like like just handbraking everywhere around the corner or the police <laughs> just had no idea what we were actually doing. So, um, but yeah, no, there's so many places now you can go and learn and, you know, do it safely and legally that, you know, it's probably a much better idea to do that. What was your first drift car? Like, what was the first car that you got that you were like, yeah, I'm going to, this is it. This is, I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn. The first car I owned that was a drift car? Yeah. A Volvo 340. It was a Volvo 340, was it? Yeah. And it had, it had so little power that I had to literally wait for it to rain before I could go and do a donut. (laughs) It had to be not even just a little bit wet. wet. It had to be like soaked. Like it literally had to be absolutely hammering it down. And then, my little Volvo 340 that probably had about 80 horsepower turned into like 700 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> could like slide everywhere in first gear. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had a few of those, a few 340s. I was you know, keen to try and get a 340 to do things that it definitely was never designed to do or even probably wasn't even possible to do. Um, and in the end, I gave up because I just broke that many of them and that many engines fell out and gearboxes fell out and diffs exploded. Uh, I then went and bought a, uh, a Nissan S13 200SX, which at that time you could pick up for like 800 quid. Mm-hmm. And it was like mint. It was like, <laughs> like, literally like someone's nan had it on their drive and it had had nothing done to it. And that's literally what I did. I, I think I drove to like Norfolk or somewhere and uh, literally just picked up a, uh, a uh, Nissan s13 and it was red and it had just been it had like zero modifications like nothing had been done to it it was sounds like the dream man, it was manual it had like it had like i think it had like fifty thousand miles on the clock and uh yeah it was just it was just insane how nice it was and then yeah just went and started modifying that and that was that's kind of where it went from there i mean i've had loads and loads of i've had loads and loads of like bmw 36s e46s over the years just for like messing around and having fun in but yeah, I had a Volvo 340, and then soon after that, I went into a Nissan S13. Excellent, man! Excellent. Did you, uh, did you, did you style it in the traditional drift JDM style, or was it like a more of a Essex style drift car? <laughs> I'm not quite sure, an Essex style drift car. Yeah, if you just close your eyes and just picture it, I'm sure you can think roughly <laughs> of what it would look like. Uh, I mean, for the first year or so, it was pretty standard looking. You know, we didn't do anything too crazy to it. Um, I was just doing sort of practice days in it. And uh, the second year I had it, when we when we decided to do the BDC, the British Drift Championship, like I got a, like a, I got like a um, charge speed uh, body kit for it. Mm-hmm. Um, got a few other bits and pieces, got some wheels and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then, uh, but even then it was still kind of like a stock car. I didn't really do much to it. Change the engine because I blew the engine up on it. Uh, had like a really bad one a one point eight CA engine in it, mm-hmm. um, and then I put like a two liter SR twenty in it. So that that was a bit better. And then um, yeah, from there it was that was that was basically it for a long time. Really, just the body kits and wheels and a little bit more horsepower. Yeah. So what's your current lineup of of drift cars? Because I know you've got the GTR, obviously. Yeah. So the 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 main car, obviously, I guess that most people know about that we've got is obviously the gtr mm-hmm. um we've got a s14a which is kind of like my little street car mm-hmm. uh, that's just still a sr20 uh that's on air um rotor forms like, as well right rotor forms yeah like stance in the box sort of car mm-hmm. yeah literally just bought some air got some wheels and uh kind of just had it on the road it was just like my little fun toy 
Um, and then my actual sort of competition cars, I've got a PS13 mm-hmm. um, and an S13. I don't know if I've seen the S13. So the S13 is the one that's in America. Right, okay. Okay. The I've, definitely the, the I've definitely seen the GTR and the PS. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah, S14. The, the yes, the S13... Um, we done a load of we done a load of upgrades to it, a load of work to it, end of last year, and then um, we shipped it out to America. Do you have a favourite out of the cars? Like, if you if I was to say to you, bags, if we're going drifting tomorrow, which one would you grab the keys for? Depends, I guess, on what we were doing. Like, if we were just messing around, and I was just just a, just a drift day, just a normal. Then I'd bring the drift. GTR. The GTR. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Right, it's cool. it's 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 honestly the most fun car to drive, um, just because it has so much power it's stupid to drive it it has you know it's it's almost got so much power that um i need to get way bigger tires for it to make it right. work properly <laughs> in comp- it, to make it work properly in competition if i was ever to use the gtr in competition we just need to get like i don't know three five fives or something on the back of it to really get it to hook up um it's got so much power out that it just it just yeah just every gear it just annihilates the tires and it ends up not going far fast enough forward. It kind of makes so much wheel speed that it kind of doesn't get going. If that makes any sense, mm-hmm. it's kind of just spinning the wheels. Um, and it's yeah, it's just retardedly fun. It's really I, I really enjoy driving it because it's easy to drive. It's comfortable. It drives really nice. Um, if we were going to do like a competition or whatever, I'd probably take the PS13. It's way lighter. Um, it's way more grippy. It you know it bites up real quick and it goes and uh you know it's not got as much horsepower as the gtr but it's because it's powered because it's power to weight ratio is way more it, it feels way more it feels almost more aggressive sometimes than the gtr i've just realized i do know your s13 that was the one i first met you with that was the car you had at that event i've just remembered it like it's, yeah I, I, I have seen it so i'm, I'm being yeah, dumb yeah. there um i have to ask because like as a as a uh just a little basic bitch YouTuber that tries his best with a little, where is my camera? This absolute bag of shit little thing here. Trying to make fun, entertaining content on this broken old thing. Like, what is it I like? Bought, I, just, I just bought one of those cameras. Yeah, they're amazing. Honestly, I call it a bag of shit because I've it's had like, I I've, I think I've filmed over 12,000 clips on it and it's been with me for like three years now and it's just, just fucked. <laughs> like, no, it just, just shouldn't still be alive. I've dropped it more times than I fell over myself. So like, it's like a poor old camera. But it's fantastic. Just, literally just bought a Sony sixty four hundred. Oh, okay. Just to just to film some stuff on the road. We were yeah, using yeah. GoPros before and iPhones and stuff, and it was just getting a bit Yeah. They're they're much better for that sort of stuff. I like these more than SLRs for vlogging and stuff because you can just chuck it in your pocket. But um yeah. obviously do you does Ricky still do your stuff, your videos? Ricky stuff? does like our big projects. Yeah. So yeah, like so. for instance, Ricky filmed Ricky filmed uh, Return to Driftenberg last year mm-hmm. um, and a few other bits and pieces. But Ricky's now solely working mainly for like players. So Ricky's oh, okay. doing a lot of day-to-day stuff with players. Uh, he's also doing a lot of freelance stuff with Monster. Okay, and cool. then as and when we get like a big project, we can bring Rick back in to yeah. kind of handle that. So I was going to ask, what is it like to be the star of one of those massive productions? Like when you and... Um, Daigo were doing the drifting on the dock. Is it you know that that dock? Yeah, thing yeah. How, yeah. What is that like to have like free reign of like that sort of yeah yeah battle drift? That's what it's got like. like to have your cars there and know you can just go and dick about in this like place. But is it like st- like almost staged? Do you have like choreographed like right, we're gonna go in here and do this and then get that shot and then move on, or is it just guys go drift and then you know? So the original stay- question, I suppose, is what was it like? Yeah, what's it like? Or yeah. what is it like? I suppose. And I tell you, it's it's really stressful. Oh, like is it? It's really, okay. Really, really, really stressful, yeah. Um, the main reason the GTR was actually built was for that video. So right, the me okay. and I, so, so Monster Energy came to us and said, we want to do this video, Battle Drift 2. Because Battle Drift 1 was filmed in Japan with Daigo and another driver called Vaughn Gittin Jr. Mm-hmm. And then they decided to film Battle Drift 2, um, which uh, they wanted to use Daigo again and they wanted to bring to Europe. Um, so they asked me to do it. But I knew Daigo was going to use the Lambo because he's got a Lamborghini drift car in the video. It's a much and I was like, Yeah, exactly. So I was like, I, so I, I can't use my S13 because it it's just, it's just, gonna, it's just not going to shape up. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's just not going to. I need to, I need to level up my game to compete with this Lamborghini in this video project. So I went to um, all of our partners and sort of suggested, you know, let's build a, 
Nissan GTI drift car, you know, and uh, it's going to level us all up. We're all going to get good opportunity out of this video and um, all the stuff that will happen. And uh, yeah, we, we managed to make it happen. But um, funny enough, that video Battle Drift 2 that we filmed was actually filmed in Sheerness. Really? Yeah, it's in Sheerness, the, the dock of Sheerness. Yeah. It was never meant to be. The video project was actually meant to be in Monaco. And I went to Monaco to, to scout the area, to go through <laughs> everything. We met the, we met the government um, in Monaco. We met the uh, chief of police for closing all the roads and doing it all. It was going to happen in between Formula One and Formula E. There's a week between. There's like three or four days in between F1 and Formula E where all the trucks leave for one race and all the new trucks arrive, all the new cars, the next race. So there's like a couple of days in between. So we had the opportunity of where all the roads are painted. We've got all the, you know, all the marshals points are all out. It's like yeah, yeah. Monaco's basically closed down for like two weeks and two races. So it was a perfect opportunity to do it. And um, unfortunately at the time there was a, there was a terrorist attack in France. It was when the transit drove through all those people. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the police in Monaco kind of just said, look, you know, we've got enough going on with security that we can't really allow you to do the video project. So that was kind of a massive bummer for us because we had, had put all the planning in. Diego's car was already on the way from Japan. The video, the video team that was shooting the video were, you know, were already, some of them had already been over and back to shoot, to sort of, uh, do the recce with us. So it was a bit of a nightmare. So in the end, we had to scrap Monaco and we ended up in a dock in Sheerness. But it worked it out pretty cool. Brilliant. Yeah, well, like... the, the, I say a dock in Sheerness. They had also filmed uh, some scenes of Pirates of the Caribbean at this dock in oh, Sheerness. Oh, right. like wow. This, this <laughs> dock's really famous for loads of things that you would never imagine. So That's it sounds, crazy. it doesn't sound that great when you say, yeah, we filmed in Sheerness. But it worked out really well. And... Um, yeah, going back to the original question, being on set on something that big is stressful, um, especially when everyone's asking you to do something. And, you know, you've got the director normally on your headset telling you what he wants you to wants you to do. And you've, it is very much choreographed. They'll, be, they'll break it down into sort of tiny little segments. Mm -hmm. So we'll basically just drift around like one obstacle. like, And uh, or we'll do one scene, which will be maybe five seconds, 10 seconds of fit, like a bus driving. So it'll literally just be like two turns, like what, what, drive around the turns, stop, go back to the start, and then we'll get told, yep, great, cameras will change positions, go and do it again. Great, go and do it. And then like literally, and then we'll go back to the start line, they'll go, cool, cameras change positions, and now we've got another option. So maybe they'll do like an above shot, then a left shot, then a right shot, then they'll have a chase car shot, then they'll have mini cams on the car, then they'll have mini cams in the car. You know, and then they'll do mini cams on my car looking at Daigo, and then they'll do mini cams in the, from Daigo's car looking at my car. So you've got eight shots of one scene, and they'll yeah. just afterwards they go into the edit and they'll just pick through whichever shots they want and make the video. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's stressful because things will happen with the cars. You know, like Daigo's car did a clutch, uh, so it damaged the clutch, and he didn't have a spare clutch with him, so we had to find the clutch in the UK quick and you know while he was getting it out, replace it. While that's going on, uh, you know the director's pulling his hair out because they've hired <laughs> they've hired like a chase car to come in for the day, and the chase car with a big camera on the front of it they're not cheap, and they're charging you they're charging you by the hour. So yeah, if you're not yeah. if you're not running the car, if you're it's not filming, he's sitting there wasting your money. So there's so many there's so many variables and there's so many different variations and things going on, and then the the sheerness port is still a live port they're not closing the port they're just closing sections for you at a time so like there'll be lorries waiting to move while you're filming and then the second you stop filming the lorries want to come through so yeah it's uh it's it's stressful and then you know on, on top of that you've got to make sure your you know your your driving's on point because you know you want to make sure that you look at the video as good as it could be and you want to make sure the directors you know get the shots that they want and uh yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, there was, there was like 15 or 20 people just from production for the filming part. Then you've got health and safety. Then you've got safety coordinator, fire, fire, fire brigade were there with a fire engine. Ambulance is there with an ambulance. So paramedic was uh, one paramedic was there. I think we had a paramedic and two uh, like technicians. Uh, then a load of people from Monster Energy were there. 
so yeah it's uh representation of from the port they're there you know so there was probably like 50 people on set for that one video and, and then uh, my, and then my team of guys which was like there was five of us running the car yeah it's just, it's yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot going on and like you know, there's 50 people there and 25 of them want to all talk to you at the same time. <laughs> so, That's just a normal day in the life of Bagsy, though, surely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I'm a bit of an eagle eye when it comes to these sort of things. Did, you, did your car have anything to do with smashing his headlight? Yeah. It did, did it? <laughs> um, what happened? Yeah, so he... he uh, so again, because we built the car for the filming, um, we had... By the time we got everything sorted, we had three months to build that car. We had we literally got the car and we had three months to put that car together. You know, and it wasn't just like a, put a roll cage and a body kit on. It was full stripped down. Chassis went off to be um, acid dipped. It came back to us. So as a bare shell, like bare as in like no paint, no seam sealer, no sound deadening, nothing like bare metal. Put the, and we had to build it from there and not only did we build it from there we decided to change the engine we didn't want to run the v6 anymore that gtr has we wanted a v8 uh we wanted to then put a turbo on it because we wanted to make stupid power so all this stuff had to be fabricated i had to i my job really was to coordinate parts so i had to get all the parts so like you know dealing with getting wheels getting the body kit from japan the wheels came from america uh suspension was from germany you know like parts were coming you know all sorts of places canada we were getting some bits from as well um so it was trying to coordinate all this in three months so basically when we were filming of course the car was never we didn't even get a chance to test it so the car was having a few issues and i think the car cut out and then daigo just came up behind me and sadly hit me a little bit oh okay yeah so it was it wasn't his fault it was more my fault to be honest so yeah. it's one of the risks of drifting though isn't it like that that's like what you kind of have to take on the chin like it's just one of those things that might happen like that wasn't even the worst part that happened to that filming the worst part was uh we were filming one of the last scenes and there was like this access road into the port so we were drifting this access road and uh they'd swept the road up to like get all the debris off of it and they swept all this debris into like one big pile <laughs> so we came drifting through and and i hit this debris that they'd swept into one big pile <laughs> and kind of got the got the car a bit loose on it and ended up going kind of up and over a curb so i had like the car kind of balancing sort of itself on the curb and then i got it back onto the road and carried on drifting it was like all in like one motion like with about, at about 40 mile an hour yeah, yeah, yeah. But as i'd gone through this debris and kind of went up over the curb a little bit dipped to wheel into some like gravel i managed to spray all these parked cars that were brand new that had just come off a boat <laughs> and just completely destroy about 15 vehicles. Like oh when I say God. destroy, we smashed windscreens, we smashed windows, we sm smothered them in stones. Oh you know, like, honestly, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a very bad time at that point. It's a, there's a, um, there's a video on YouTube on my YouTube account, on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, I kind of, we had some, we, we actually showed some footage of the cars as well. I'll, I'm going to have to check that out after we yeah. finish talking. Like that, I'm That's not going to lie. That, 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 did you laugh to yourself? Like a little bit? At first I, I at first, I was like, what's happened? Because like everybody was looking around like panicking. And I didn't, know, <laughs> and I kind of didn't really know. I didn't really know what the, I didn't really know what was going on. I was like, that was good, right? That was a good shot. Like that could, that looked cool. Like cars not damaged. I'm good. Die goes all yeah. right. And I said to Daigo, I was like, what's up? And, you know, and like, you're, you're right. And he, you know, he doesn't really speak much English. Uh, he was just like, okay. And okay. I was like, right. <laughs> so, uh, but then I found out that, yeah, we'd, there was about 15 cars there. <laughs> yeah. Got wrecked. And the port manager, <gasps> oh, luckily, it was, luckily it was kind of like the, one of the last shots because we were, I think we were going to get told to leave at that point anyway. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, was, yeah, bad. But luckily, you know, for our you know luckily you know there was insurance and yeah that all that all got taken care of oh that's brilliant that's that's so cool like, what a cool story to tell like that's so good um, it wasn't cool it wasn't cool at the time there's a lot of very upset people but, oh, but looking back fun. now uh you know shit happens didn't it so whatever yeah, bit of banter in it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about a bit of banter but it was certainly something <laughs> and, uh, yeah that's so good um 
So with with uh, your experiences doing, because you've kind of had like the full range. Are you you're like an an actual monster athlete, right? You you can call yourself like an actual like monster. As he sits here drinking a beer, yeah. Um, bit, yeah, but you've got a monster jacket on. You've got, see, you've got your monster hat on. And am I right in saying you can't buy monster hats? Like, you get given those as, like... Yeah, yeah, hat. no. They're made by, they're kind of made by that like, new era. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the logo on the side. Yeah, you can't buy them. Same as, same as, other, you know, same as other brands. Uh, they, they'll make hats maybe for, like, staff. Yeah, yeah. Or, ambas- or ambassadors or mm-hmm. athletes, whatever. And... Yeah. Um, they you know, you you can't purchase certain ones, and this is one of the, you know the ones they give us are the ones that are meant to represent people that represent the brand. Yeah, because one of my you friends buy- is the um is a mountain biker, uh, Sam Pilgrim, and he's a monster athlete as well. So he gets yeah, all the yeah. cool monster know, apparel and dude. stuff. Yeah, he is a good dude. Yeah. It's funny, man. Like, um, but he comes and like, always turns up in like a new monster jacket or something. I'm like, mate, that's so cool. He was like, yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's sick. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't um, like they'll do collabs. So like Monster, I think did like a collab um, with like NASCAR, and you might be able to buy like a NASCAR collab Monster Energy jacket or hat or whatever. Or um, like for instance, like, you know, some other drivers like Ken Block will do like his own range of gear like hoonigan gear or whatever and that yeah, will include yeah. monster branding and stuff but yeah officially they have like athlete clothing and athlete hats and bits and pieces that they give to the majority of you know representatives of their brand basically do you have a fondest memory of an event or an uh like one of these productions you've done with monster is there like one thing that you that stands out that you did with them and you're like wow that was just the best thing ever because you must have done a lot, like the, the opportunities you've been given. I thought I'd put you on the spot and uh, ask you a question that might be quite hard. I suppose, um, I suppose, I guess uh, my favourite one would probably be when we got, to, we got the opportunity to film. We got the opportunity to film in the first ever series of the Grand Tour. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I, got to teach, uh, I got to teach Richard Hammond to drift. It yep. was like the last episode of the first series. Were you with uh, Connor as well? Was he? Yeah, so Connor yeah. Shanahan, me, and uh, one other Polish driver. Um, and it was like, well, I, I wasn't really in the competition. Um, I was kind of Richard's sort of mentor or teacher yeah, yeah. or whatever, letting him use my car. And he was in a competition. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was that was three or four days filming in France and then two or three private days over at Rockingham. And then the actual program was filmed at Rockingham. And that was a lot of fun um, getting to film with that. Um, you know, they're a really good, really good production company and they really, really went full out to like look after us and stuff. And we had a really good time and Richard was nice to work with and uh, yeah, getting to getting to maybe work on that show was a lot of fun. That was probably like a, a big highlight for us something like that cool man that's that that's i forgot you did that 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 must have been amazing is richard hammond yeah. really nice yeah he's a good dude you know the, the the thing is you know especially with working with richard it was one of the first things he said to me was um what a lot of people probably don't realize is, is that the only part the only you know the only bits of driving the car that you'll see me do is the bits i'm doing you know like all the glamorous shots that you see kind of like put in while he's talking yeah, yeah. of like a car float. You know, if you can't see Richard in the car driving, chances are he's not driving. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so yeah, they don't, yeah. they, 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 Richard's time is so, I guess, valuable to them uh, when he's in the car talking. If they'd want anything else from Richard, like driving the car around a corner, sliding it, drifting it, flat out shot, tracking shots, all that sort of stuff. They'll just get, a, they'll just get another driver to come do that. Right. Okay. Richard just does the bits that you can see in talking in the car, or the bit outside the car talking. You know, because they because they want to they you know they want to get a show done, and they've got like a window of time to do it in. So they're like, right. So we'll get say two cars. Richard can go and film doing the in car stuff over there on that one, and we'll get all the other glamorous stuff with this second driver or whatever. So you know, one of the things he said to me was, you know, the, the show shows us doing loads and loads of drifting and loads and loads of sliding the cars around and, you know, driving, you know, really fast or whatever. But he said 99% of the time, that's not us because our time is so, so taken up. Like we'd love to do it, but our time is so taken up with the whole, you know, obviously being in the show that we don't get to do all that fun stuff. That's done with, that's done with another crew and, 
another driver when I'm off doing something else. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, I had to, we, we kind of almost went back to the start with like sliding a car and drifting. I mean, he had an, under, he obviously had an understanding because he's been driving a very long time and a lot of really cool cars, but he had no real experience in like handling, handling yeah. a car. You know what I mean? so, yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, trying to get him to, you know, remember to put the clutch in and pull the handbrake up and, you know, getting him to get, you know, power over or, you know, getting him to change direction, like from one angle to the next angle and stuff like that. We had to go through all that sort of stuff. And uh, he, he was really serious about it. He wanted to take it like, you know, take it really seriously and really get everything out of this opportunity that he had to learn how to do this. Cause you know, he might want to go and mess around in a car for a couple of hours, but the production company would be like, no, we need you over here talking to this camera, bro. Yeah. You, know okay. I mean? like yeah, you, yeah. you need to do the talking part. Like we can get load of B-roll with <laughs> yeah. somebody else that's way cheaper. We can get the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, can get, we can get all the B-roll with that other guy there that charges us, charges us like 250 quid a day when you're however many thousands, I guess. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, but not even the not even that it's more of a case of like they just need richard for all the talking parts and that takes up all the day of filming that's so that's so interesting i never even thought of that you know that's yeah, something yeah, that's yeah. never even crossed my mind yeah so How that was the thing like so yeah so he was like you know it was really cool like it was really humbling to hear him from him like saying to me I need you to teach me how to do it. And I was like, what do you mean you need me to teach you how to do this? Like, I assumed you could to you do could it. Do yeah. It. I was like, nah, I need, I need, I don't want to, I don't want to look bad on TV as well. So I need to be good at this. Yeah. Have you ever, are um, expecting me to be able to do this. Oh, I see. Have you, um, have you had any more drift encounters or any encounters really, any more famous people like that, that like you either uh, done some driving with or had to associate with in some form of, so I've done, uh, I've done, so it's now, so my third TV show, my third TV show with Idris Elba. Oh comes yeah, yeah. Out, comes out on Monday. Okay. So, cool. um, we, I met Idris Elba about four years ago and we did a show called King of Speed. Uh huh. Uh, no, that's wrong. Sorry. I did a show called Idris Elba, No Limits. No Limits. Was then it? we did a show, then we did a show in about a year later called Idris Elba, King of Speed. King of Speed, yeah. And then um, we've just done a show called uh, Elba versus Block. Okay. Which I is Idris Elba versus Zampar. Ken Block. So that comes out on Monday, um, which, is on a, which is on a new platform called Quibi. 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 It's an app. It's like oh, okay, an Amazon cool. or a uh, Netflix. Oh, okay, cool. The Quibi is like, you know, a new platform of short TV shows. So they're, okay. they're basically designed for commuters or they're designed for, you know, people that want to watch like a 10, 15 minute show, not a 45 minute show. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. it's, it, so it's, and you can watch it horizontally or you can watch it, you know, you can watch it vertically or whatever. And, um, and it's literally just short films of short, sharp, exciting content. And it's, I think it's like six or seven episodes. And it's basically Elba versus Block in a series of different car related stunts. That sounds awesome. And challenges. <laughs> yeah. And we filmed it right near, um, we filmed it next to the uh, London airport. Oh, okay. Basically cool. Basically opposite the Excel. Awesome. And uh, yeah, we filmed it last year in June and it comes out on Monday. That's awesome, so it should man. be really good. It's like a load of monster trucks in it, a uh, wall of death, uh, a stunt where they basically jump a car off the end of this ramp into like a load of like smashed up cars. So it comes to like a dead stop. It's like who can jump the furthest, um, two wheels, loads, loads of really cool stuff. And I would, my, my, my role on that program was um, coaching Idris to kind of compete against Ken. Awesome. So although I know Ken and I've done loads of different things with him and it's funny because, you know, obviously we get on quite well. I was on the other team with Idris trying to beat Ken. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken being the, the driver that he is, it's, it's quite tough, you know, obviously to try and beat him in car challenges. But yeah, yeah. That's cool. Idris is a good dude. He's a Londoner. He loves motorsport. He loves cars. I watched and, his uh, fighting documentary as well. He did when he learned how to do the so tie kickboxing. Was, so that was part of the series No Limits. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Just over no limits, yeah. So he did. He did one about motorsport. He did one about the fighting. Yeah. Uh, he did one about airplanes, uh, and I can't remember the others. But there was a series of like five or six episodes. But I think it was for like Discovery. 
Yeah, he yeah. looks like the kind of guy that when he got, does something, he does it till he's absolutely good at it. Like, he's like, I'm going to be good at whatever it is. Like, that's like, yeah. the, I don't know him at all. I love him as a celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Like, I look at him, I think he's a cool guy. And he just yeah. seems like the kind of guy that is balls to the wall and he's not going to fail. That's, that's yeah. how he comes across sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like that about a lot of things, you know, because obviously he's a very famous actor. Um, and he, but he loves music and he loves DJs, DJs, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I remember when I first met him the first time when we were, did the first show, he was telling me about getting into DJing, and I was like, cool. But he also said to me like, no one was taking him seriously, you know, because you know he, um, he's an actor. You can't mm. now be a DJ just because you decide to be a DJ. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You no. Know, um, but by the time I by the time we did the second show, he was he had like a residency in Ibiza. You know, like all last year as well, he had. a every Saturday night in IB3 was DJ. So, um, yeah, so that was cool. Like, yeah, no, it's cool. You know, being able to have these opportunities from drifting, you know, I would have never been out. I would never have been able to do any of this sort of stuff if it hadn't have been for that Volvo 340. Yeah. Yeah. What a mad yeah. thought, right? <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? And, uh, and honestly, it's the craziest thing. I remember, especially, um, like when I was really young, my mum was always trying to push me into making sure I like, I got this like really super, cool job or whatever in London go and try and do something you know get like an office job and you know worry about all that stuff and then you know I ended up doing something in motorsport and this little 340 Volvo has given me so many so many little opportunities like things like this that, when, you know, if you crazy. ever see one of those now a 340 I know they're quite a rare car nowadays but if you ever see one does it ever like warm you inside you're like that's the reason I, I am where I, I am. genuinely I generally went after the first like the, I know the first one doesn't really exist anymore because I bent it so bad <laughs> but there was there was one that kind of got reshelled and all my stuff got put into another one and I went after trying to buy it um but I just I couldn't track it down I oh. literally I think it got like scrapped or something Oh, so I if anybody went, I, has a good one, you want it? Well, I, I, I wanted, I, I just, I generally just wanted my one. Back. Wanted your like, one, I yeah. If I could buy my first ever drift car back, <laughs> I'd have that. But um, I did have, I've, I've driven a few, I did drive a few uh, about three years ago over at Arena Essex. And um, as soon as I got in it, I could smell the smell of the car straight away just hit me. Because you just, that kind of old Swedish car with the seats, yeah, yeah. And everything, you just can't, you can never get away from that smell. And I got in it and I was like, this feels like home. Like I generally got in it. I was like, I fell back in love again until I'd done like three laps around the track and I realized <laughs> how bad it drove. And I was like, this, these cars, I remember why these cars are so bad. And uh, it was just driving it around the track was just horrendous. And uh, I was like, well, that was fun. Thank you very much for letting me have a go in your car for three laps. I, I just reminded myself not to buy another one. So Arena Essex, now you've brought yeah. that up. Is that gone forever? Mm. I'd like to say never say never about anything because it's still there. Mm. Because you um, also used to host your King of the Ring events there. Yeah, yeah. So, and they were, as a spectator, such a good night out. Like, just as a car guy, to be able to go there and watch them drift in, look at a little car show on the side. Even the car park was like a car show. Because it was yeah, real, yeah. all car guys turning up. Do you know what I mean? It was just like... I remember going to a few of them and I, I'd even vlogged a couple of them and I was like, this, this is just so good. And then it was like, oh, it's ended. It was like, like, yeah. devil, really. I, 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 you know, I used to run it with one of my best friends called Adam and uh, we only said a couple of days ago when we were just chatting about it, he said, we, you know, we, we didn't really know what we had until it was gone. You know, we mm. were so lucky to have, we were so lucky to have that at the time. And um, it's such a shame that basically, uh, yeah, it, it got sold for development and, um, it was out of our control. We, you know, we had no, we had no say in whether they, the owners kept it or sold it and they ended up selling it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it, I mean, we ran it for sort of seven, I think we ran it for about seven years, seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was cool. Like, it, you know, and it gave so many young drivers an opportunity to go, not only, you know, to, to learn to drive, but to then drift and then even go on and do other things, you know, like some of the drivers that first came to King of the Ring, have now gone into sort of the British Championship, and some have made it into the European Championships, mm -hmm. and um, you know, little car shows, somewhere, just somewhere to go. You know, like there's so, there's so little, so many, there's so few places to go, and just go and hang with your mates now with your cars, and just chat and hang, and and you know, do something on a on a you know on a Saturday night. The uh, you know, it was all, it was an awesome little venue, and it had a great atmosphere. And if the weather was, if the weather was good. It was uh, it was a really really good night out. It was a lot of fun. 
you know there was very you we were fairly limited with the facilities there you know there was it was it wasn't exactly um higher class venue but it was it was uh it was nice it was good it was it was everything we needed and uh it's a shame it's gone really because you know it's and, it, and it's it's kind of now that it's a shame it's gone so many people i think once it closed realized that they couldn't go there anymore and that sucked yeah it's, i mean it does suck time, everyone right? was like oh yeah i'll go you know it's like everything if you miss one because we did like eight of them a year if you miss one oh, i'll just go to the next one next yeah, month yeah. and then in the end like next month didn't happen and people are like shit it's gone like yeah. that's it you know and, and, it, and it is still there you know the uh the track is still there at the moment they just as far as i understand they're just using it at the moment for storage there's i don't think there's any planning gone through for the site um you hear all sorts of rumors every now and again about somebody trying to reopen it or do something with it but i'm pretty sure that you know at the moment that there's no talk there's no real talk of that sadly. you have to wait and see what happens yeah it, it sucks because you know this there's not that many places to you know there isn't that many places anymore with rocking them going or whatever to go and drift so that was one venue although possibly not the most ideal venue for you know high-end drift cars that want to you know practice but at the end of the day it was somewhere to go and have some fun with your friends and hang out and yeah and you and we could run and we could run to like 11 o'clock at night on a saturday night like what car show do you know that can run till 11 o'clock at night and still cars are driving around and stuff you know and actually like racing yeah. Like what race event do you go to that's still running at 11 o'clock at night? You know what I mean? No, so no, unless it's a 24-hour race at Silverstone or something that happens three or four times a year, you know, we, you know, that, you know, in the middle of the lakeside, there was cars still racing around at half past 10 at night and there was a car show going on. Yeah. You know, and it sucks that it's gone, but, you know, that's what happens, I guess. Yeah, it's just one of them. It's just one of the unfortunate events, I think. But they it, they were great. So hats off to you and and Adam. Great name, by the way. So uh, so yeah. Um, what does the future hold for you? Wow, that's a good question. Currently unemployed right now, <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, we had a really busy se- we had a really 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 busy season, uh, sort of planned out. Um, I really, obviously, I'm, you know, a lot of the events are just getting postponed at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, everything's kind of being pushed back. Um, I hope that things will still happen this year and some of the events will still go on. It would it would be a massive shame if things like, you know, Goodwood Festival Speed, Players, all that sort of stuff in the UK, if, you know, let's say, you know, it doesn't happen, for instance, mm. you know, it'd be, it'd be terrible. Um, well, I've got a ticket for the Players Classic track time. So I'm hoping it happens. That's meant to be my civics out in like so. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the same time, you know, there's it's it's fairly you know without getting into it, but it's fairly serious what's going on and it's massive. Um, I think I think we've got to kind of do everything we can to make sure that it doesn't get uh, as bad as it could. So um, it's just going to be a case of seeing what happens, I guess. Um, right now yeah just riding it out you know we've got we you know we had loads of you know the european championship which is called drift masters we race in that so as soon as we're allowed to head back to there we'll get back to that um you know we do we got some more events this year in america um but again you know even sema you know it's trying to figure out whether that's going to happen because you know there's so many so many variables and so many things that you know we don't know what's going to happen so it's Every, as I said, at the moment, all we know is that everything is still happening. It's just getting pushed back. Um, we'll just see how far it gets pushed back before we end up in 2021. Yeah. Do you enjoy you know? like the the SEMA shows and like the stuff where you're more of an ex exhibitor? Because like I saw you at Auto Sport last year, I think it was, wasn't it? Like I come and hung out with you for a little bit on your on your booth. Like, do you enjoy those events? Well, because they're long, yeah, I mean, aren't they? But, some of them, like three, four days. It's a, like maybe five. Is it SEMA like a five day thing? Did you have to do the... So, SEMA is a four-day show. Four um, yeah, SEMA is a four-day show. We're only, I'm only there... I, I mean, I, I enjoy SEMA because it's in Las Vegas. Yeah, so it's hard not it, to like it, isn't it? It's, hard, <laughs> it's, 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 an easy one to, it's an easy one to go enjoy that. You know, everybody, everybody that I know uh, in the car industry generally um, is there at SEMA. So, it's good to go and see everybody. You know, we go and catch up on what's happened throughout the year, talk about next season, what we're doing with, you know, various different deals that we have in place. Um, Autosport is a little bit different. Yeah, we sometimes have a car on display. Um, when you saw it this year, we had a car in the live action arena. 
Okay, cool. So we were doing the we were doing the drift show in the live action this year, um, and that was that that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I I pretty much you know I'm lucky. I enjoy most of what we do. If it's a static car show, and we just go and hang out. I enjoy going and looking around the other cars, seeing what's going on with people. And you know, I come from you know when when I when I first passed my driving test, I had like a Fiesta, uh -huh. and I really enjoyed modifying that back in the day. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And you could pick up a copy of Max Power and ring somebody and order it. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to wait a couple of days, and that part turned up. You know, when when tuning a car was actually bolting things on. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, when you would genuinely go and put a body kit on your car. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you, when you go and buy a set of lowering springs and an exhaust system and an air filter. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, mm. you know, it wasn't just like a plug-in flash, and you, you wouldn't change anything. Water. You wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't change anything on the car because the car looks awesome as it is. Do you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. nothing nice about my Mark three Fiesta. <laughs> there was zero, there was zero sport about my, my Mark three Fiesta. So, you know, it was, it was, it was, you know, when you, when modifying was actually modifying. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, you know, back in those days, that was what was fun. So I, I still when, enjoy going to shows, seeing what people are doing. Um, or if it's a show where we're driving even better. Yeah, when when uh, South End was South End, when it was prop, proper naughty. Mate, South honestly, End. <laughs> I, rem I, I remember I remember the days where we would get to South End about six seven o'clock. We'd be there until ten. Then you go to Basildon, and there'll be some like street racing going on up and down Basildon until about eleven twelve o'clock, and then you head back. Then you'd head down to Thurrock Lakeside and just go and hang with your friends at McDonald's and mm. you know go and go and see what else was going on. That was every Saturday night from my 17th birthday, probably to about 19, 20. Yeah. I, I, I come onto that. At like when I was 17, 18, I, I started going down South end and all I can remember was just Sierra Cosworth, just doing burnouts everywhere. Like it was non, this is when Cosworth were like three grand and no one wanted them. So like every Gary had one, do you know what I mean? And it was just like, yeah burnouts after burnouts and then like nearly hitting your car and stuff it wasn't like oh my god he nearly hit my car. i was like yeah that was so cool like it was just so much like just so much fun i had so just the memories of being in that generation like i'm lucky i fell into that little group i feel because like i feel like the modern stuff is just not the same like it's still cool like it's still nice no, i genuinely kind of stuff, i like, genuinely I, I, I said to my buddy the other day like adam when we were chatting i was like i genuinely feel sorry for people nowadays a little bit because you know, there isn't that, I feel like that world that we had when we grew up um, of car culture on a weekend isn't there anymore. I mean, I don't yeah. know for sure. I mean, I know yeah. there's still car cruises and meets going on and bits and pieces, but that whole South End, Bazard and Lakeside Saturday night, uh, and I'm sure it happens up and down the country in all different various places, but as I knew it, South End, Bazard and Thurrock, it's, mm. it doesn't happen like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like you just, it's not you know it's just and that was so much fun it was it was so much fun it's hard to tell people how good it was as well like the the atmosphere was just like it was like going to like a, if you're in a football like going to a football game it was that sort of like yeah we're going yeah, to be yeah. so good like all squad up with your boys in your cars and that and like it was just i loved it i genuinely loved it like i really did like yeah. that was like <laughs> yeah just cruising up and down the strip for a couple of hours parking up talking yeah. about just, just talking shit. to your mates and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah just chatting, chatting shit, to your like, mates and then there'll be like a group of lads trying to get cars as they drive past to stop and do a burnout. And, you know, it's just, <laughs> honestly, it's just, honestly, I'm sitting here smiling and laughing yeah, thinking same. about some of the memories <laughs> I've got with some of my mates back in the day doing that sort of stuff. And uh, it's good to see, like, even some of them now are still into cars, still doing various things with cars and uh, still get to hang with some of the boys, you know. Not, mm, not, all of us have, not all of them have grown up just yet. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening, sir. Um, it's been great having a conversation with you I hope you've enjoyed it as well and I hope yeah, the uh, yeah. viewers out there and listeners and whatever else have enjoyed it too where can they find you if they don't already follow you across your platforms uh, well I suppose the easiest one is just Instagram so it's just Bagsy Boy UK on Instagram and from there it's Facebook and YouTube and all that sort of stuff and then they can uh, watch you go and do some big skids in places as well hopefully are you competing <laughs> yeah. at all this year did you say Drift Masters uh, so yeah, yeah Drift Masters European Championship is what we're <laughs> competing in uh as soon as it you know as soon as everything gets back and to normal. they live stream all their stuff don't they so we can watch yeah, so, uh red bull media house uh 
broadcasts uh, it live on Sky and uh, across Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Cool. All right, Bagsy, thank you very much, sir. Um, if you're a viewer and a listener, please make sure you subscribe and all that malarkey. Thank you very much for listening. Peace.